Hi everyone, this is James from Wanderlust FP and today I'm going to show you the best settings for exporting your footage to upload to Vimeo or YouTube. I'm going to be using Final Cut Pro 7 to do this, but the principle applies to any editing software that you're using. So just follow the steps and you should end up with the best optimized footage, giving you the best quality and the smallest file size. So we've just finished our project and we're in Final Cut Pro 7 or we're in our editing software and we're ready to export our footage. So what we're going to do is go to File, Export, and in this instance, I'm going to export using a QuickTime conversion. You may not have this option in your other editing software, so if not, just follow along uh, until you get to your settings area. So the first thing it's going to do is let me name my clip and select the destination. So for this one, I'm just going to call it New Video, and I'm going to click on Options so that I get a more detailed information about the type of format that I'm going to apply. So the first thing is we get this pop-up window and we're going to go into settings and the default compression setting at the moment is H.264. So this is a H.264 codec that's going to be applied to our QuickTime container or our QuickTime file type. Now using H.264 is the recommended setting for Vimeo and YouTube so we'll stick with that and so is QuickTime so that's all great we'll stick with this for now. The frame rate is the frames per second that you want your footage to be exported out at. If you select current, it will maintain whatever your sequence settings were. Now, I know what my sequence settings are. They're 25 frames per second, so I can leave that at current. If you wanted to conform it to a specific frame rate, this is where you have the opportunity to do that. You could select 25 frames or 30 or any particular frame rate that you want. Just bear in mind that if you go with um, a frame rate that's higher than what your footage is recorded at, it will just add additional frames in. And if you go with a frame rate that is lower than your sequence, then all it will do is remove frames. So you may end up with something that's not as smooth as before. So that's important to remember. But in this instance, I um, know that it's at 25. I want to output at 25. So I'll leave it at that. Now keyframe, what you want to do is leave this at automatic. What it'll do is it'll create a new keyframe every time new data is required to be stored. So if you have a really fast action sequence, it might make lots of keyframes to store the information of the person moving, running or jumping. But if you have a still shot for quite a long time, it won't need to create lots of keyframes to capture that data because there's not a lot of things moving. So setting that automatic means that it will reduce your file size. And data rate, if you leave this at automatic, it will do the same thing as keyframes. It will create a higher data rate when it thinks it needs it and reduce it down when it thinks it doesn't need it. But for the purposes of uploading to the internet, we're going to want to restrict this. A good guide is if you've got like a three minute video, then you probably want to end up with a file size that's about 250 meg. Now, Vimeo has a limit on the amount that you can upload in any one video unless you pay for a subscription. YouTube doesn't, I don't think, or maybe it's really, really high. So you have a little bit more flexibility here. But as a general guide, so that people don't have to wait for a long time to stream your video and you're not wasting space. Remember, we're looking at uploading to the Internet here. We want to keep things at a really nice kind of optimized level. I'd say anywhere between 15,000 and 17,000 is good depending on the size of the video that you're uploading. So if you're looking at like a 1080 clip, then maybe 20,000 might be better for you. But if you're running at like 720, 15,000 to 17 should be more than adequate. If you've got a graphic like this one here that's got um that has like a gradient on it, you might want to go up to the higher end of 15 or 19,000. Um, just be careful of the file size, but what will happen is it will reduce the color banding, so the blocks and the, the graduation between the, the gradients, so the smoother the gradient will be caused by the higher data rate. If, if you have a lower data rate, it will be a much blockier gradient, so that's something to keep in mind. So let's go for 17,000, and we're going to optimize it for streaming. Everything else you can leave as normal. Filter you can ignore, and then size. You want to make sure that you set it to the size of your sequence or smaller. Remember the general rule, you can always go down, but you can never go up in resolution. So remember, if you're recording at 720, 
you can go 720 or lower. If you're recording at 1080, you can go 1080 or lower, but you can't go 720 to 1080. Mine is at 720, so I'm just going to select that and click OK. And then for sound, we need to compress our sound. So we're going to select AAC and the sample rate that we're going on is whatever our sequence is and whatever our audio is that's within our sequence. Now your audio that's in your sequence, it should be the same. So in my instance, it is 44, 100. It might be 48. It's up to you to check that. Just remember to keep this number consistent throughout or you might start seeing problems with your sound. Then where it says render settings, we're going to click on best and the target bitrate, we're going to say 320. Click OK. And we don't need to prepare for internet because we've already applied all of these settings in here. You could use a default setting that comes with some of the more newer programs like Final Cut Pro X and Adobe Premiere CS5 or CS6, but I prefer to set the limits myself. Um, it's just a good way of understanding the system and also you know what you're getting. So click OK and that's it. You're all ready. Just save and start your export process. If you've got any questions, just um, drop them in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as possible.